Uh, okay, so we're back on the on the Nickelodeon marathon. We brought out the wheel. Cat just put all the movies on the list into a big, you know, that big online wheel. It's a website. You can put all the stuff onto a wheel and spin it. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and it landed on... I have to look up the title again. <laughs> it landed on Dora and the Lost City of Gold. Which was a film that we were not, we, it landed on that and we said, uh, oh, God, okay, fine, I guess we'll get, we'll get it out of the way. This was the live action Dora the Explorer movie, uh, from 2019 that I think everyone just completely forgot about that it even came out and it was in theaters. Again, we're only doing the theatrical releases. It was in theaters. Everyone forgot about it. Um, and we, we couldn't even find it on any, it's on like Paramount Plus, which like she doesn't have. Who has Paramount? Leave a comment if you have Paramount Plus. It's just like a fake streaming service. Red Letter Media in that one Nerd Crew episode literally made up Paramount Plus as a joke. And then it became real. They predicted the future. Uh, so... Uh, we watched the. We had to go pirate this because we couldn't find it anywhere. We watched it and we were like, "Okay, this is ugh, fuck." Okay, fine. So the film, like, we just got to get this out of the way, <laughs> uh, and that's what this is gonna be. Obviously, based off of the Door of the Explorer TV show, which I assume it's probably been going for. It's probably still airing. Uh, actually, I, I imagine it's still airing. We both watched it as kids. We are familiar with it as much as you can be familiar with a show that you haven't watched since you were like maybe seven at the latest, probably. So the film starts and it wasn't it wasn't really what we were expecting. And it's kind of weird. It's a kind of weird film. So weird that about mm, I want to say twenty minutes into into the into watching it, we had to pause because I was so curious about the screenwriter, and we looked it up, and it's a man named, uh, uh, primarily written by a man named Tom Wheeler. You might know Tom Wheeler because we scrolled down on his filmography, and his most recent film was Puss in Boots Two: The Last Wish, <laughs> and we like. What? <laughs> oh, that explains it. This guy is kind of a little goo. He's kind of a little oddball. <laughs> now, I should, I should make it clear. Dora and the Lost City of Gold is uh, nowhere near as good as Puss in Boots to The Last Wish as like a film or like like a screenplay, right? As a story. Um, but it's a lot better than I expected. Uh, I was... Uh, I, I, I don't know if I'd... It's so weird. I don't know if I'd call it, like, a great movie. But we kind of had a lot of fun with it. And part of that was, like, making, like... Like, cracking jokes and riffing and all that. But it's, like... It was a pretty fun watch. The film is... Okay. There's this one moment at the... So, the, the opening of the film, it's Dora... Um, as, as she's like six years old, it's like her in the, um, uh, like how she is in the TV show. And it's her and her cousin Diego, who you all know. And, uh, they're in her house in, uh, Peru? I thought they were in Brazil. I just have the, I have the Wikipedia page open, just in case. I, I totally thought they have a map later on, and I could have sworn they were in Brazil, was where she started. But I guess they're in Peru. Um. Uh, uh. And she's with Diego, and it's, they're, they're doing the Dora show, with, like, the talking animals, and it lasts about ten seconds, and then they get back to their home, and it all wipes away, and you realize, oh... Okay, so all the Dora stuff with the talking animals and everything, and Swiper's there, and all that. Swiper the fox with the with the mask and the 
gloves. So he doesn't leave behind paw prints, I guess. Um, that's all their imagination when they play together. Okay, cool. Fine, whatever. So Diego has to leave home. Or he's, he's, he's like, he's just visiting his family. He's, just, he's, he's, visiting, he's like spending the summer or something with Dora and her like archaeologist parents in Peru. And he's got to go. And uh, uh, they're all sad and they say goodbye to each other. Um, and Dora is back at home with her family. And uh, uh, they're eating dinner or something around the table. And she looks at the camera and she says, Oi! Or, fuck, what is it? <laughs> not Oi. It's not fucking Japanese. <laughs> she goes, Hola, soy Dora. <laughs> Can you say, uh, what, uh, uh, platanos or something, something like that? I think that's what that word is. <laughs> she was like, she does the Dora thing, right? And her parents look at her and they're like, sorry, what, sweetie? And she's just smiling, just huge smile at the camera. And they're like, sorry, what? <laughs> and then she just like looks back at them and acts like nothing happened. And they just kind of look at each other like, what? What the fuck was that about? And you're like, wait, is she like, is Dora like schizophrenic? Does she, does she like need some pills to take? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's weird. And shockingly, um, for as much like kind of self-aware humor as there is in this film, uh, never brought up again. It's just like a weird one-off joke. Uh, that it's weird that Dora stops to, like, address the audience. Um, but, yeah, so then you cut to... So they talk about, oh, they, hey, this is, there's this... We're looking for this lost city of gold called Parapata. And uh, uh, Dora's like, wow, does it exist? And they're like, yeah, we're pretty sure it exists. We just don't know where it is. And then we cut forward, like, 10 years. So she's now 16 years old. However... She is played by, like, a 20-something-year-old woman. She's played by a, a grown, very clearly a grown woman, I'm pretty sure. Let me double-check. What is her name? Isabella Moner. Merced. What the fuck? Why does the Wikipedia say Merced? Isabella... Oh, known professionally as Isabella Merced. Wait, what the fuck? So her real name is Isabella Yolanda Moner known professionally as Isabella Merced. And in the Wikipedia page for the movie, they call her Isabella Monaire. So, th okay, whatever. Uh, wait, 2001. She's a year older than me. So in 2019, when I... Oh, fuck, math. Wait. Oh, no. Oh, no, wait. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, no, wait. Oh, no. I gotta pull out the calculator. Shit. Why is the calculator not working? Why is the Windows calculator blacked out? What the fuck is going on? That's weird. It's really strange. I'm so bad at math, I have to... <laughs> I have to... I have to hang on. Uh, 2019 minus 2001 is 18. <sighs> okay. Because of the jokes that I'm about to make. Because... I fuck okay so she looks a little okay oh okay 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 we're not fucked yet all right she looked I thought I totally thought she was like a 20 year old right I totally thought she was a, she's an she's 18 in the movie which is about two years older than she should be in the story which actually is pretty decent casting not to think about it usually they they do just get adults to play children or teenagers which is Huh, okay, so, um, she's, she, okay, whoa, okay, back on topic, <laughs> she's, so, she's, 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 she's uh, running around the jungle with her little monkey friend Boots, who is in the movie but doesn't talk, we'll get to that, um, but doesn't talk, and, um, he's just her little monkey friend, he's this weird looking CG monkey, and she's having a little adventure in the jungle. And she's wearing the Dora outfit. The purple shirt and, like, the yellow shorts and all that. 
And here's the thing is I, I was thinking about this and I would talk, I said this to Kat. I said, you know, the funny thing about doing like an, like a grown up Dora is that you can't cast an actress who's too hot because like the cost, the outfit itself, like the costume, it's like this kind of tight little shirt <laughs> and these little, these little shorts. <laughs> Kat was like, yeah, like it's getting a, <laughs> a little dangerously close to like, like the sexy Halloween costume, like version of the costume. <laughs> Which, now that I don't know she's 18, is a much worse thing to say. Sorry about that, Isabella. Um, uh, for most of the film, she's not in that, and it, it, it alleviates whatever weird thoughts were happening in my brain. Not weird in the sense that I want to fuck Dora the Explorer, just that I'm making the connection. Okay? Get off my back. Uh, yeah, so she's going... And she... She basically play. She's playing Dora as an adult with like no personality development from being a six-year-old. She is a wide-eyed, uh, wide-eyed girl with <laughs> very little social experience, who loves nature and knows everything about the animal kingdom, and flora and fauna and all this stuff. Uh, and she has little adventures in the jungle. Uh. Uh, and her her uh, uh, she she gets hurt at the start of the movie in and, and it have a, a fall which would absolutely like shatter your femur at least like something in your legs but she's fine <laughs> um, and then she she's back home and her parents are worried because they they want to go on they're going on a trip to to investigate this parapata mystery right. And they're like, we're worried about you. We don't think you can handle being by yourself in the jungle. Like, you're a little too reckless. We're sending you to American High School in Southern California, in Silver Lake specifically. <laughs> and um, she's like, no, I don't want to go to American High School. I want to be in the jungle. And they're like, no, you're going to American High School, but watch out. Um, and her dad, played by Michael Pena, uh, has a whole thing about, like, he's warning her about dangerous people, but he only talks about, about ravers, which is, like, one letter. It's, like, what? it's, like, really close to another type of person that you should be warning her about that exists in the world that she maybe hasn't encountered in the jungle? Talking about raters, like people who rate films on Letterboxd. Like, you got to stay away from those people, like professional critics. Creepy, weird people. Uh, so she gets shipped off to Silver Lake to go live with... At first I thought it was a host family. No, it's uh, <clears throat> it's her tia y tío, a.k.a. Diego's parents. And she's going to Diego... She's going to high school with Diego. She's transferring in. Um, so Diego's all grown up. And this is the point of the movie where I kind of started to to feel it a little more because they they want you to know that Dora is a fucking weirdo. She is a socially naive weirdo who's lived her entire life in the jungle and almost never talked to kids her own age. And she's grown up around monkeys and Diego thinks she is cringe as fuck and he wants nothing to do with her. And I have to give it to the actor and also the way it's written too and probably directed. Um, everyone involved in this process of the Diego performance. It's not in like the corny movie way of like where it's like really overdone. He <laughs> he looks like he doesn't want to be there and like he's He's got that look where he's just like clammed up and he doesn't want to talk and he's just trying not to emote at all and just like, yeah, um, cool. Hey, nice to see you. Yeah, cool. Hey, how are you doing? Like, it's just minimizing himself as much as possible and it is awesome. It is legitimately really funny. 
he doesn't want anything to do with her and he knows that he is so scared to death that she's going to embarrass him at, at at American high school. Oh, and she does and she and she does. <clears throat> uh uh <laughs> they, so like they have all this whole there's a, a whole like fish out of water thing where they're going and there's like a there's like it's like one of those high schools where you gotta go through a metal detector before you can enter, and it's American high school. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and she's carrying like a hundred like camping supplies because she doesn't know. Like, does she have textbooks? What is she? They don't really go into much detail because the whole purpose of this segment is just to show that she is socially inept and people think she's cringe. Like she meets. She meets like the smart student council top like top of the class girl and and she like at first she thinks that she's like nice because she's like a save us we're selling cupcakes to save the rainforest. And then they're in class and the tea they're in English class and the teacher asks like, hey, here's a question about Moby Dick, and nobody raises their hands except for that girl and Dora. And Dora gets up because the teacher just wants someone else to call on who's not the smart girl. And Dora gets up and she's like, she just aces this answer about Moby Dick. And <laughs> and she's just way too excited. She's just way too in- peppy. And Diego is just like, fuck, oh my fucking God, dude. Like, can you please tone it down? He's like pulling, he's doing that thing where he's like pulling his shirt kind of like over his face. <laughs> and it's like, God, he's so good at acting embarrassed. The actor kills it on him. <laughs> During this movie. Um, <clears throat> and then afterwards, in the bathroom, the smart girl, like, fucking corners Dora and is like, listen, you little fucking bitch. Don't you dare try to show me up as the smart one in school. That's my, that's my fucking title. <laughs> She's like, watch out. <laughs> and, like, everyone's just an asshole. Uh, and she's just like, People just, like, bullying her. And it's just awful. Um, and they cut to... Uh, uh, it's like the Halloween dance. And there's this kid who's gotten, like, bullied. He's, like, this... He's this, like... He's this, like, white nerd kid. White gamer nerd guy. And he is, like... The first scene, he just gets, like, fucking literally dunked on by some, like, football players or something. <laughs> And, uh, uh, Dora is at this, like, Halloween costume party for the school, which is the one inaccuracy. I was in high school. Uh, no upperclassmen ever show up to school dances. No one ever does it. It's all, because you know how I know that? Because I never showed up to a school dance after sophomore year. And, uh, the only time that I went to one, actually, the only time I went to one was because I, I, I was on, like, student council in some, like, uh, complete sinecure position. Uh, but part of that was that I had to go, like, chaperone, like, monitor a school dance. And guess what? It was all freshmen and sophomores and one senior that I knew from band who got busted on the way in because they found his jewel. Hilarious. And then he got suspended for, like, a week or something like that. And I watched it happen. I was like, hey, it's, 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 uh, I'm not going to say his name. It's, you know, Jehoshaphat. And then he truck it, get there, they pull it out, and he, like out of his sock, and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, oh man. Anyway, completely unrealistic that anyone, she's supposed to be 16, so she's like a junior in high school, or at least. Um, uh, that she, that anyone would be there. But anyway, yeah, smart girl is there as Ruth Bader Ginsburg, which is really funny. <laughs> Diego's there is messy, which is awesome. <laughs> um, and Dora is like this goofy ass, like party city, like sun costume, and she goes up to this the nerdy white gamer guy, and she and <laughs> she's like asking him like if he dances or something. He's like, no, I I can't dance, but like I can. I, I can, like, hold my breath. I used to get... Pe- people would try to drown me in the pool when I was a kid. Uh, and so I, I, I now I learned how to hold my breath underwater for seven minutes. Because I, I was a victim of attempted homicide, like, multiple times. Like, he just says it. 
and you're like, what What the fuck? And he's like, you want me to, to show you? I can show you right now. And then she doesn't say anything. And then he starts going... He's like, no, I can, like, imitate a drowning person. And he starts like... <laughs> and then it just cuts to her, like, smiling. And then back to him. <laughs> and then it cuts back to her. And she goes, I love dancing. Dan like, it's, I think it's really cool. And I love singing, too. I'm going to... I like... You like dance? And I'm like, what the... I feel like I'm having a nightmare. <laughs> I feel like I'm on drugs. Like, something got released into the air. It's the fucking weirdest thing. <laughs> Thing ever <laughs> and then she goes and does a little wednesday adam dance <clears throat> uh, uh <laughs> on the dance floor and uh uh it's like it's, 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 she like embarrasses her brother and you, sorry cousin she embarrasses diego and he's like dude you're so cringe what the fuck stop embarrassing me and they have this big falling out and she's like, Diego hates me. Yeah, he thinks I'm cringe. No, I thought I was based, but I was actually cringe. <laughs> um, so the plot, like, actually kicks off when they're at, like, the Smithsonian. Or they're at, like, some history museum for an exhibit. And they have to do a scavenger hunt. And all of the established characters so far, Dora, Diego, Smart Girl, and Nerd Guy, are on a, on, on a, in a group together. And they're looking for, like, an ancient thing. They're looking for, like, what's the oldest thing that's on display in the museum? And you have to find it and write it down for your scavenger hunt thing. And she meets someone who's like, hey, I heard you had your scavenger hunt. You know, I can actually show you the oldest thing we have in our basement. It's down in our basement. If you really want that credit, and she's just talking to this strange woman at the museum. And Dora's like, wow, you can do that for me? That would be awesome. And she like leads, she like goes down there alone without anyone. And then gets like, what the, what happened? She gets like fucking chloroformed. <laughs> <laughs> and and she like and she like gets dumped into a box with her like all of her group mates so that i guess there can't be any witnesses or something like that and she they get like human trafficked to peru in the it what the fuck is happening <laughs> so they get trafficked to peru because there's these they call them mercenaries they're trying to find her parents so that they can lead them to Parapata. I'm going to say it like that every time. Uh, so that they can get all the gold for themselves. And they're using Dora as like a hostage to, or like to lead them to her parents. And it's super... Like, it's really weird. So there's this whole escape thing where there's this guy who shows up who I'm like, that's going to be like a twist villain, right? Because there's no way, because it's too weird, the circumstances that he shows up, that he happens to be exactly unlike the airfield where the mercenaries are picking her up. <clears throat> and and they make this whole getaway, and during which uh, the mercenaries call Swiper the fox, and he is just a CG animated cartoon fox wearing a bandana and gloves. And he talks. And and this is like a thing that's in the movie that's real. Like in the intro, I was like, oh, all that stuff, that's just imagination. And maybe there's maybe there's going to be like a stand in like there's going to be a fox that steals something. Or maybe there'll be like a human character who fills in for the swiper role or his nickname is Swiper. That's what I was kind of thinking during the movie. And then no, it's just the fox. He's a cart. A, he's a CGI fox who stands on two legs and he speaks English and he sounds like a cholo. And he goes, and he goes, hey, well, I need, I'm gonna need that man. <laughs> like what the, f dude? What? <laughs> what the fuck is this? And it's never explained. They never explain it. It's really weird. <laughs> So you got this whole group and now her and this guy who's like a linguistics professor and her friends, quote unquote, from high school, they're on a journey to find her parents. 
and they do Indiana Jones stuff, and they have disagree that's the, the most of the movies they have they do these little adventures they get into life-threatening situations they're attacked by like native tribes like that one part of indiana jones and <laughs> excuse me and there's like animals and there's like a lot of talk of breeding there's like a lot of breeding talk in this movie like between like 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 they, they, they in like in quick succession too in like like three scenes in a row there's like talking about like mating and it's the first one was like was like diego has a crush on the smart girl or something and dora's like you know a life threat they're having like a little heart to heart talk after one of, after they had there's like a fight in the group and D- dora store dora goes off and she's moping a little bit. And Diego goes over because he feels like he should talk to her. And they have a little heart to heart. And then they wind around to the to the to the Dora saying that he totally has a crush on her, right? And he's like, well, I mean, no, I don't. He's like denying it. And then she like she says, you know, being in a life threatening situation uh, in a lot of species accelerates the mating process, or like the t- <laughs> the desire to mate or something. And he's like, what the, whoa, what the, f- you made that weird as fuck. And then he just leaves. <laughs> and he's like, what the, f-? and she's like, doesn't know, she like doesn't get it. And then, um, uh, what the, f-? and then there's a bit where they get like separated or something. No, no, it's, it's, they get stuck in quicksand and like, they get stuck in quicksand and and the, all of them get out of the quicksand, which I actually learned from this movie. It, it seemed pretty legit, like a method for like getting yourself out of quicksand if you don't have someone to like, if you're by yourself, which is um, it's you lay on your back, uh, so that all your weight gets distributed evenly, so that you you float up more. <laughs> um, and then you like slowly kind of move your legs back and forth. Um, like, in and out, so that you can do, like, uh, you create little, like, air pockets. Basically, you, like, work a little bit of air underneath you, and then you do, like, a, um, like, a backstroke, essentially, to, like, uh, you basically, like, swim your way out of the quicksand. It seemed pretty legit, actually. It seems like a, an actual thing that, that, it seemed pretty realistic. Anyway, uh, the one, like, professor guy who rescued them, the, like, adult in the group... Uh, he gets, he gets stuck because he's too scared. And then, like, these two scorpions, it's actually, again, much like Indiana Jones, these two scorpions with the red ants, that happened in Crystal Skull, though. These two scorpions, like, start surrounding him, like, circling around him, and they climb up on top of his head, and, like, they're gonna fight. They're like, oh, they're, no, it's two, two, two males, they're gonna fight. And then someone goes like, I don't think, they don't look like they're fighting. And then Dora's like, oh, it's a female. They're going to start fucking. She doesn't say fucking. She says mating. But like, they're going to start fucking on top of his head. What the, what the, what is happening? What is happening? Anyway, they get him out. Later on in the movie, like not too long, not too much longer after that, there's, or wait, did this happen before? I don't remember what order this happened in. Um, they get separated, and it's just the, it's the smart sorry it's it's smart girl and nerdy guy, and and they're just walking around like down a river, and smart and they're like I guess we're lost like I don't know what what to do and nerdy guy's like I guess we just you know settle down here in the jungle, and I uh, guess we're gonna have to start a family and she's like no what what the fuck is wrong with you you weirdo. <laughs> He's like, I guess I, I guess I just have to fuck you. I guess I just have to come inside of you and, and make babies in the and we have little jungle babies. It's so weird. It's so weird. Uh yeah. Anyway, the 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 things happen. Uh they find her parents. They do a lot of Indiana Jones shit. Uh it turns out that the guy who was a teacher, wow, surprisingly, he wasn't actually a professor. He was a treasure hunter, and he was lying to them the whole time so that he could get to Dora's parents so that they could, he could just, <laughs> by gunpoint, force them to uh, find, uh, find the way to Parapata for him so he can take all the gold. 
<clears throat> and they're going in this like line right and then boots shows up because i guess boots was around and he starts untying them and all they escape and they gotta like save her parents and everything uh but like dora is really concerned and she's like alone she's alone in the in the like uh 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 yeah no 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 before they like resolve before they have the big like come together and let's 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 be a team moment dora's like by herself it's nighttime boots has just rescued her um and they've all kind of like scattered because the the mercenaries saw them so they all scattered to the wind and they haven't met up yet and dora's like talking to boots and she's like, ah, what do I, I don't know what to do. And Boots is just a monkey, right? Like, he doesn't talk. He is just a monkey. He's a CG monkey. And she's like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. And then Boots starts talking. And it's Danny Trejo. And, <laughs> and I, I lost my fucking mind. <laughs> fucking Machete starts talking to her. Because I guess Danny Trejo is obligated. Like, I, he probably, like, signed a pact with the devil or something. And in exchange, he is obligated to be in every single Mexican movie ever made. <laughs> like, Mexican uh, <laughs> fucking culture movie ever made. Um, And he gives her, like, a pep talk in his deep-ass Danny Trejo voice coming out of this cartoon monkey and it's weird it's weird as fuck and it inspires her to like save the day i forgot to mention the part where they do the wizard of oz thing where they have to like go through a, a whole field of these big plants and they touch the plant and they and by accident and it, it like opens up and releases a bunch of spores that make them have like a hallucinogenic episode and it switches to like the cartoon Dora, like they start morphing into cartoons and they all have like an insane trip. They all like, there's like this, it's like a three minute sequence in the middle of the movie of like Dora and Diego as like cartoon versions of themselves. Like almost like, like, like thinking that they're like invulnerable and they're going to like jump off of a cliff and shit. And then all the Dora characters show up like the cow and uh the iguana and the little bugs and it's like it's really and the chicken and the troll it's really weird and then they just kind of wake up they had this weird just like like acid trip on like jungle spores it was really strange i wasn't expecting it <clears throat> um uh, yeah and then the end of the movie is literally just uh the last crusade where i guess mild spoilers for the end of the last crusade you should have watched indiana jones and the last crusade when i made that podcast segment about it because it's a good movie um it's the literally the same thing of like the the climax of that <laughs> that film where like the main characters have to go through this whole series of like deadly trials um, and then it clears the way after they solve it, it clears the way for the villain to come through. And then there's like a final test at the end, which is like, um, it's like a riddle based off of like, it's some like moral lesson or something like that. And the villain steps up and he assumes that he knows what it is, but he picks the wrong thing, um, because he's like greedy and shitty and then the, and then dies for it. He doesn't die in this one. He gets close. He gets put in, like, a precarious situation. He survives at the end, but he gets, like, captured by, by like, tribal peoples. Uh, and then Dora picks, like, the real thing and then saves the day. Uh, and then they're all, like, going to have a... They're all going to... Uh, uh, and then, oh, then, like, there's this old woman. There's this old woman who is played by, apparently, a very legendary Mexican actress. Um... Named, uh, Isela Vega? Or is it Isela? Isela Vega? Who's, like, a very... Or was. She died in, like, 2021. Um. Very famous, uh, uh, Mexican actress and, like, director. 
who uh, plays this old, like, sage woman. And then she shows back up later in the during the scene and she has this bizarre transformation sequence like sailor moon where she like becomes she turns like gold and then the gold like ex- it literally looks like a common writer transformation sequence and the gold like f- like cgi sparkles off of her and she's like a young like younger i guess hotter woman <laughs> um played by Korianka Kil Kil Kilcher Kil Kilche Kilcher I think. Um. <clears throat> uh. Uh. Yeah, she's thirty three. She's a very attractive thirty three year old lady. I guess thirty at the time. There's a character in this movie called Wait. One of the mercenaries is named Christina X. What the f- <laughs> what? <laughs> um anyway. Uh yeah, so then like they capture the treasure hunter guy and then at the last minute <laughs> that fucking fox comes back, swiper and he takes this gold statue that's on like a pressure activated plate and angers the gods. And, like, a hurricane's gonna envelop them. And Dora has to, like, grab it from him and run back into the eye of the storm uh, and put it back on and seals up the the ancient treasure and all that. And then, the, and then, and then she's like, and the movie ends. And she goes, well, it doesn't end there. She goes, you know what, Mom and Dad? I think I want to go back to American high school because it's a brand new adventure for me. And hey, all the characters learn something. Diego eventually learned to trust his sister and to appreciate her her whimsy. Uh, the smart girl learned to like ease up a little bit and and got a little bit of perspective that high school isn't the most important fucking thing in the world. And it's actually okay to fuck up a little bit in high school <laughs> and not be the smartest person ever. God, dude, there are kids in band who made it their entire personality. And it's like, dude, can you, like, what are you going to do when you graduate? <laughs> um, And that was her. And she had to learn how to not be like that. Uh, nerdy guy, uh, I, I don't know, I guess got a little self-confidence. And then Dora learned to embrace new experiences and all that and that being herself is okay and uh the what else happened it's pretty much it yeah i was pretty as the yeah, said it was a weird movie it was a very weird film uh shockingly enjoyable fun to watch in some parts and also fun to laugh at in other parts uh, I don't know if I would call it a great movie, but I had a good time watching it, which at least counts for something. It was much better. It was like, like we went into this thinking that it was going to be a slog and we were just going to have to like endure like an hour and 40 minutes of like a, it's like the Dora movie. Like what? And then it ended up being a lot more interesting than I, than I assumed it would be with a lot of twists that didn't feel like the regular twists of like we're gonna throw in like a risque joke for the parents there's like genuinely weird stuff genuinely strange stuff in this film 